Today we're going to make a cabinet out of wood and polycarbonate. This video is sponsored by Amazon and I'm going to tell you a little bit about their awesome Father's Day gift guide later in the video. I've been interested in polycarbonate panels for quite some time. I've seen some really cool greenhouse projects and I was curious to see if I could integrate it into some furniture pieces. I ordered a bunch of different types online and decided to make a cabinet out of these triple walled panels that are about 5 eighths of an inch thick. I want to take advantage of the factory edges, so I clamp the straight edge down to the panel and cut it with my circular saw. I'm using a finished blade on the circular saw that's intended for plastics and plywood. I don't want to inhale any plastic particles, so I made sure to wear my RZ mask, which is by far the most comfortable dust mask I've ever worn. I'm just ripping pieces that are about 16 inches wide, and it cut really cleanly. The factory edge has a slight radius to it. On the cut side, I was really surprised at how strong and flexible these thin walls were. For the exterior structure, I'm going to use some leftover 1x3 oak that I had. I wanted this to be a minimal tools project, so I just did all of these cross cuts with my circular saw guided by a speed square. With this technique, it's really easy to line the blade exactly on your pencil lines and cut to precise lengths. Some of the cross pieces are going to have half lap joints, and I cut these out with a jigsaw. A jigsaw gets it done really fast, but a handsaw and a chisel would probably be a little bit more precise. So if the occasional sixteenth of an inch gap really bothers you, I would recommend doing it by hand. If you're a more experienced woodworker with a full wood shop, you could do this using a sled on a table saw as well. These short half lap pieces are going to make the hinges for the cabinet. And now I just have to cut out bigger notches in the vertical supports. These notches are going to be equal to the width of three of the pieces of oak. I cut these out with the jigsaw as well. After cutting the notches, I did a quick test fit to make sure everything fit the way it's supposed to. I lightly sanded the pieces with 150 grit paper just to clean them up and remove the pencil marks. The assembly process started by gluing up the pieces that are going to serve as the hinges. I spread out some Gorilla Glue and clamped the pieces together two at a time. I let the glue on the first two pieces cure before adding the third piece. I find that this just helps me keep the pieces aligned more easily. For the top and bottom support pieces of the cabinet, I'm going to glue up half lap joints. So I clamp down a scrap piece to use as a spacer before gluing on the second layer. I placed the hinge pieces over the vertical supports and started gluing the second layer onto the vertical pieces. You'll never be 100% accurate, so for this type of assembly process, I recommend cutting the pieces as you need them. That way you can take field measurements and make sure everything fits perfectly. I'm going slow with the glue up, making sure to really spread the glue out evenly. This will just reduce the amount of sanding I have to do later. For clamps, all I'm using are these $1 spring clamps. Once the glue had cured, I gave the pieces a light sanding before adding glue into the joints and assembling the frames. I reinforced the glue joints with some 2.5 inch long finished screws. I pre-drilled the holes just to reduce the chance of splitting. This wood had been sitting outside and was a little bit warped. So I added in some additional doubled up supports that allow me to clamp the long vertical pieces and keep them nice and square. I covered the screw holes with some wood putty, but if you want to get fancy, you could get some oak dowels and countersink the screws and use that to cover the heads. The handles for the cabinet are also supporting the hinges, and I'm going to start by gluing a piece of 1x2 oak to a piece of 1x3 oak. The overlap space will end up creating room for finger pulls. I pre-drilled holes through the 1x2 and glued and screwed it to a slightly longer piece of 1x3. 
Once again, this wood was pretty warped, so that's why I'm putting my knee down to really put a lot of pressure on it and flatten it out before I drive in the screws. Once the glue had cured, I sanded all the pieces with my orbital sander and 150 grit sanding pads. For dust protection, I really like these masks by RZ Mask. You can get them on Amazon, they're inexpensive, they're reusable, and they're way more comfortable than traditional disposable dust masks. I was now ready to start assembling the hinges. These pieces of oak are two and a half inches wide, so I measured in one and a quarter inches on each of the sides. This gave me a mark in the center where I'm going to drill the holes. I started with a small pilot hole just to establish the center. I then switched to a 3 8 inch diameter bit, which is the same diameter as the dowels I'm going to use. I anticipated that my holes wouldn't be perfectly aligned, so for the middle piece, I started with a 3 8 diameter hole and then switched to a half inch drill bit and drilled the hole larger. This way the dowels fit snugly in the top and bottom piece, and the middle piece can rotate loosely around. I trimmed the dowels to length using my Japanese pull saw. I want to be able to remove the door, so I'm just going to let friction hold the dowels in place. If you wanted a more secure connection though, you could drill a hole through the side of the dowels and add a pin that keeps them from sliding out. I use finished screws to attach the handle to the hinges. I use three two and a half inch long screws on each side. I could have added glue to these connections to make them a little bit stronger, but I didn't want to have to sand into all the nooks and crevices to remove any extra squeeze out. Plus these connections will be reinforced when I screw the door on. I used a scrap piece of polycarbonate as a spacer to create room for where the door panel is going to be. I then placed the side panel of polycarbonate pre-drilled holes and use pan head screws to attach it to the oak. I then placed the door piece and screwed that to the hinges and handle. The polycarbonate is rigid but very lightweight so it makes a really excellent door because it's not putting too much weight on the hinges. The material is really easy to work with. The one caveat would be that it tends to have a little bit of static electricity to it and sawdust sticks to it so you always need to wipe it down and dust it. I am now ready to assemble the entire cabinet. I applied glue to the half lap joints and then used my spring clamps to hold them in place. I pulled out the dowels and removed the door from one of the sides just to make it easier to lift into place. I added more spring clamps and then used my speed square to check and make sure that all my corners were at right angles. Once the glue had cured, I tilted up the cabinet and put the door back on. I took a field measurement of the inside of the cabinet and then cut panels for the tops and bottom and the shelves. The polycarbonate comes with a thin protective plastic film on each side. It was really nice working with a translucent material because I could see through it and I knew exactly where I needed to drive into screws. The shelves are going to be supported by a few screws, but I really want to make sure that they're level. So I use this skill laser level to project the lines on the inside walls of the cabinet, which shows me exactly where I need to drive in the screws. The shelves rest right on top of the screws. If I wanted to make more substantial supports, I could cut some small pieces of oak and screw those to the interior walls. Now before we finish off this video, let me give you a quick word from our sponsor, Amazon's Father's Day gift guide. Father's Day is fast approaching and Amazon is helping us out by curating a really great list of fantastic Father's Day gift ideas. They sent me a few of these to test out and here are some of my favorites. First up is the Skill Self-Leveling Green Cross Line Laser with Projected Measuring Marks. It projects up to 65 feet and has projected measuring marks that help you set equal distances. It has superior visibility and most importantly, it's self-leveling. I can just put it on my tripod and as long as I get it close to level, it will finish leveling itself by itself. The batteries are integrated into the device, so all you need to do is just plug it in to charge it. This is handy for little projects like hanging a mirror or photos, or big projects like tiling a bathroom. Next up is the iRobot Roomba i7. It's a robot vacuum that has an automatic dirt disposal built into the dock. 
It empties on its own so you don't have to think about vacuuming for weeks at a time. This is a great product for pet owners. Its high efficiency filter traps 99% of cat and dog allergens. There are also some old school items like this Waterman Kareen Amber Shimmer Fountain Pen. This thing is super fancy with pure fluid curves that conjure the sleek lines and billowing sails of a luxury yacht. But maybe your dad's not that fancy and is more of a beer and burgers kind of guy. Well, check out this Weber Performer Charcoal Grill. It's 22 inches in diameter and it holds up to 13 burgers. I like that it's easy to move, has a whole bunch of built-in hooks, and this really convenient counter that folds up and locks into place. This is just a few of the items in the Father's Day gifts, guys, so click on the link in the description box below to check them all out. All right, back to the build. I really like the efficiency of this design. The polycarbonate panels are rigid enough to reinforce the hinges and handles, so there's no extra hardware needed. Each component supports another component, and the whole thing is really rigid. The doors open cleanly, and the result is a very space-age Japanese-looking cabinet. I'm going to use this cabinet to store extra bed linens and towels for the container house. If you want to see more experiments with polycarbonate, let me know in the comments section below. Check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks! Bye! Oh, and thanks to Amazon for sponsoring this video.